Well, it may not be a new season, but Greg, it is a new year, and some teams could use, right, a fresh start. And hey, wherever you can find motivation, right? It's a long season, lots of mental gymnastics, and Kevin, everyone overcomes in their own way. Now the opening lineup for the Oklahoma City Thunder. The post pair form will be Williams and Holmgren. Gilgis Alexander out there with Josh Giddy. And it's Dort in at the small forward position. And the basket is good. Inside, John Collins knows how to be forceful. Muscles his way to his shot. Giddy the pass to Dort. Holmgren sets the screen for Dort. Fires from the line. The rebound by the Jams. Their last meeting was in Oklahoma City, where they were unable to fight off the Thunder. And their last time playing this club, foul trouble became a big problem for them. Their starters had to take an early stint on the bench. You know what? That's unfair to the bench to expect them to pick up all of the slack. They need to stay away from slapping and reaching. Summer 2022, Utah hits the reset button, Steve, trading Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. And Kevin, they got a boatload of picks in return. And I love the young guys they got as well. Markinen and Kessler, those guys are keepers. Now, here's Markinen. After the miss from Shea Gilgis Alexander. This is where Markinen can just dominate you right under the hoop. Gilgis Alexander passes to Holmgren. Now, here's Giddy, defended by Sexton. Back to Giddy. Holmgren kicks to Dort. Shot clock at five. Here's Giddy. Count the bucket, and he's got a free throw coming up as well. I mean, every time down the floor, this is what you're trying to do. Find the right matchup. And he'll be shooting his first free throw of the game here. Just about two minutes into the game. First quarter of basketball. Done against Gilgis Alexander. Dunn passes to Kessler. Dunn looking over the floor. Lock at six. The shot by Sexton. No good. Thunder have gone just one of four to get this game started. Steve, when you analyze Colin Sexton's game, what do you think his strengths are? Well, Kevin certainly is his scorn, but he's also dependable at helping run the offense, too. He's what you call an effective combo guard. Here's Dunn, following the score by Oklahoma City. Outside Collins. Collins, a screen on Giddy. Here's Sexton. Nothing that time. He's uh, 0 for 2. And here's Williams now. He'll bring it up for the Oklahoma City Thunder. They trail by one. And attacking the rim. Holmgren making excellent use of that height inside. They get it back. Outside for Sexton. Outside Cowan. Pass to Dunn. The Jazz need to get off a shot here. Shot by Collins, no good. The Thunder have gone 50% from the field, hitting three of six since the opening tip. Gilgis Alexander finds Giddy. Now, here's Holmgren. He's tightly guarded. Passes it to Dort. Here's Giddy. Drills it from outside. Giddy's got eight points. The defender was pretty much helpless right there. His man had a clear height advantage, and he got the exact kind of shot he wanted. Outside, Markinen makes no mistake on the open jump shot. He can score as a pick-and-roll ball handler, something extremely rare for someone Markinen's size. And so it's Josh Giddy making things happen for Oklahoma City. He notched eight points in the quarter and has that terrific basketball instinct on display. And we'll be back with you shortly.
And close game underway so far. We'll see if either of these teams can jump out in the second quarter. And for the Thunder guys, what stands out to you so far? Boy, that their offense looks really good when everyone's in sync. Terrific first quarter. This is exactly what you want to see if you're a coach. Your team starting fast and playing with confidence. Shot on the wing spot. It's Clarkson and Markinen. Then it's Olenek. Then it's George. And it's Hendricks in at the four. That's the five on the floor for the Jazz. Olenek and the dunk by Olenek. Watch out. Kelly Olenek coming through. Gilgis Alexander with it. Nothing on the board. And he finishes nicely on the layup. Shea Gilgis Alexander shows the innate ability to use change of pace dribbling as an offensive weapon. Greg, isn't it amazing the way Gilgis Alexander has polished off his game? The footwork, Kevin, is impeccable. Three-level score makes every shot imaginable. And what's scary, this guy still has another level to get to. Just over a minute gone here in the second quarter. <laughs> to the inside. The kick out to Williams. From outside, off the mark. Marking in against Waltz. George looking over the floor. And no one near Clarkson as he lets it go. Trains the three-pointer. Boy, have they gotten hot here in the second quarter. No wonder they're in front. Outside Williams. Puts it up from seven. And it's Gilgis Alexander missing. And man, is this team on a roll right now offensively, Greg. So fun to watch. They're playing with so much confidence which is why they're tearing it up on this end. Time out, time and now the latest from our reporter, David Alder. Thank you, Kevin. Josh Giddy is very capable off the dribble and at 6'8", he's starting to use his size to finish. Coach Mark Dagnalt said he's definitely physical. Before, he was just trying to shoot over people, but now he's taking up space, using his size and strength. He's getting a lot more around the basket. Kevin? Yeah, he is getting into him. D.A., thank you. And the Thunder going with a whole new group out there. And we see players sometimes, Greg, after a change of venue, they, they change teams, suddenly taking the next step. What can key that leap? Kevin, it's not all just opportunity and fit. I think there can be a mental component as well. A, a fresh start can give you a blank canvas to try new things. On defense, Utah. Only given up two points this quarter. Micic, the pass to Holmgren. Can they get it? And the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. Yeah, I mean, take that. Holmgren, he knows defenses want to rub him up a little bit, and he welcomes the challenge. The Thunder have shot just one free throw earlier. One for one in the game. Thank you. 
The free throw off from Holmgren. Greg, we were just talking about Chet Holmgren, and he's a lot tougher, I think, than his frame might indicate. Physically and mentally, he does not bat down. In fact, he, he's often the one who initiates contact. You, you think you're going to bully him? He's going to try to bully you. One of the best young lob men in the business, John Collins, finished with an explanation point. Michich, the pass to Dort. Giddy against Sexton. Giddy kicks to Dort. Six to shoot. The pass to Holmgren. And he's good on the three ball. Holmgren's got seven points. And with that threat of the outside jumper, a home room generates space for this offense. Done outside. On deep, Collins. And Holmgren pulls it down. Definitely a situation you want to make sure you don't give him too good of a look. Williams kicks to Giddy. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Pass to Michic. Fires for three. Kessler with the rebound. Kessler's got his fourth rebound in this one. Great read from Dort there. An intelligent player who hustles on defense and distracts shooters. And some good action through the first two quarters as we reach halftime. Jazz lead by two. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much, John. You are having your way inside the paint. What's allowing you to be so effective? Uh, my teammates are finding me. I think I'm doing a good job of trying to, you know, play with energy, run the floor, roll hard, uh, and be an athlete above the rim. And I think, like I said, my teammates are finding me. I'm doing a good job of finishing. You are certainly being available to your team. Thanks very much. Back to you guys. Thank you, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of action following halftime. Hello, everybody. No lack of drama tonight. The Utah Jazz might be taking this one all the way down to the wire. Offensively, they've been impressive. Working together, you can tell this team has great chemistry. Kind of like us, you know, here in the studio, but not quite at that level. And that's not meant to be an insult. Some would say our chemistry is, uh, how did you put it, Shaq? Unmatched. And now let's take a moment to look at the upcoming games on the schedule. They're staring at a rough road ahead. The kind that can break you down. But this is what separates good from great. The way you take on obstacles in your path. Mm. To be formidable, to ultimately win a chip, you have to be good away from home. Thank you for being with us. Now let's send it to Kevin Harlan for the second half tip. Welcome back. The calendar has flipped over, and so have we into the second half of our broadcast. You have to like what you're seeing, guys, from Josh Giddy. Yeah, and just look at the numbers from the first half. He has been very efficient. And it's not like everything's been at the rim. There's been a number of jump shots along the way. And after a fairly even first couple of quarters, the second half could turn out to be a great one as both teams try to gain an edge. And you look at the Thunder style of play, very fast-paced. And because of that, they put up a lot of shots. And their goal really is to overwhelm you and wear you down. Of course, they allow plenty of shot attempts as well. Here's who Mark Dagnold is going to put out there to start the second half. Dort and Williams up in the forward positions. Josh Giddy is out there with Gilgis Alexander. And it's Holmgren in at the five, roaming the paint. Right now, I'd send it over to the sidelines and get a report from David Aldridge. Thank you very much, Kevin. Oklahoma City is a franchise that has to have patience. Coach Mark Dagnold said, there's no schedule. That's the biggest thing. There's a way of operating that we're very confident in and that we're going to bet on. 
and that's developing, having a good environment, and trying to play a style that scales forward. We're just going to keep our head down. Kevin, back to you. And keep going straight ahead. All right, DA, thanks. Outside, Markinen. That's in, coming off an assist from Dunn. Markinen's got five points now this quarter. Already one of the best shooting bigs in the league. Marketing matches threes. Holmgren gets the bucket. Yeah, he's in such a great rhythm right now. Makes sense to get him the ball any way you can. Let him decide whether to shoot it, whether to pass it. He's your catalyst right now. To the middle. Left clock shot on the way. Tried to bank it in, but he misses. And here's Gilgis Alexander. He'll bring it up for the Oklahoma City Thunder. A two-point game. Jazz have gone two of four here to start the second half. Down against Gilgis Alexander. And Markinen throws it down. What I like is when Chris Dunn keeps his poise, keeps his eyes up, good things happen. Pass to Williams. Gilgis Alexander against Dunn. Gilgis Alexander looking around. Five on the clock. And the rejection by Collins. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Collins. George has checked in for the Jets. And a switcher also for Oklahoma City. Michich, he's checked in for Gilgis Alexander. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. Jazz leading by four. Now, here's George. Right now, he's averaging 11 points a game. Sexton's shot is good. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Micic, the pass to Giddy. Williams has a screen for Giddy. And there's Williams. That's good on the assist from Giddy. And you got to love the big bucket in the paint in this sort of a grinded-out game. Collins, a screen on Giddy. Sexton kicks to Collins. And Utah again with the bucket. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Williams looking around. Here's Holmgren. Nice spin off the left rim and in. Holmgren's got seven now in this quarter. And playing up tempo, pro-level ball can be hard for some guys, but Holmgren has easily made the transition. Giddy against Sexton. Outside, George. The basket good off the assist from Sexton. Sexton's got three assists in the game. And so it's the Utah Jazz heading to the bench with a seven-point lead as we wrap up the quarter. Their lead is where it is because they've gotten good shots. A lot of good shots. And we've got more in 2K Sports coming your way after this break. And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feed. Fundamental basketball. Keep your eyes up. Keep the ball moving. You're going to keep the defense on his heels. And this is it. Glad to have you along for this fourth and final quarter. Shut on the wing spot. It's Clarkson and Markinen. Then it's George. Then it's Kelly Olynyk, And it's Hendricks in at the power forward position. 
That's the group right now for Utah. Confident and composed on the three-point shot at a critical juncture. And play stops. Whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. And not the most common call you'll see in the NBA, but hard to argue that pick wasn't illegal. It's often a tough call that can go either way, but I agree with you on that one. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. Williams, a screen on Clarkson. Here's Gilgis Alexander, and he banks in the layup. He is long for a guard, 6'6". SGA is tough to handle down low. George against Gilgis Alexander. Olenek, a screen on Wallace. Markinen passes to Olenek, and there it is for him. And the Jazz lead by four. They're scoring boatloads of buckets. It's raining buckets from inside. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. Well, it's a player's league, but certainly coaching has its place. Yeah, if that weren't the case, you wouldn't see so many coaching changes in the offseason. And now we've got some time to check in from the sidelines. What do you got for us, D.A.? Hey, guys, during the last break, here's what Mark Dagnall was telling his team. Now, he asked the defense to lock it down inside. He said, let's get physical. I don't want them to think we're soft in there. No more easy shots in the paint. So that's what the defense is set to do. Guys? Thank you, David. Fourth quarter, still young, just over a minute play. Dort finds Gilgis Alexander. Holmgren with a screen on Dunn. Passes it to Holmgren. And a great assist by Gilgis Alexander as that one goes in. Gilgis Alexander's got his fourth assist in this one. Dunn dishes to Markinen. Dunn outside. And the Jazz, another three. Really the best result they could have hoped for on that possession. They get back all three points they just gave up and are close to putting this thing out of reach. Williams sets a screen for Gilgis Alexander. And Oklahoma City again with the bucket. That's Shea Gilgis Alexander. Slim frame, but has the length to finish over or around you. Collins a screen on Gilgis Alexander. Collins kicks to Sexton. The pass to Dunn. Six on the shot clock. And he drives in. Kessler misses the layup. And, and, and typically he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that position. Here's Gilgis Alexander. He nails it, and we're tied up. When they need a score, Shea is willing to put the offense on his shoulders. Down against Gilgis Alexander. The offensive rebound. Markinen good. Lowry Markinen making his presence felt as this game heats up. And Gilgis Alexander's got the ball here for Oklahoma City. Elbow shot. Goes back up. And Markinen lays it up and in. 
and it's a four point Jazz lead. Really nice job to convert the putback opportunity there. I mean, he stayed with that play from start to finish. That's something we say about him a lot. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Rebound, Utah. And he's frustrated. That's a shot he can make in his sleep. And now they decide to foul intentionally. Forty-four seconds left to play in the final quarter. Took the opportunity when he saw it. And the Jazz lead by six. Amazing. The growth of Collins seems to know no limits. From 11 feet away, and again, Oklahoma City, no good. And that's an intentional foul. Good on the first, and that makes it a seven-point lead. And a tough break as his second attempt at the line. No good. Guys, let's just go ahead and call this one. It's over. They couldn't make enough plays when it mattered. Interesting game, though, in terms of some of the matchups. And the three-point shot wasn't always there for Dort. But he's put in a ton of work on it, and it shows. He hits the first one, and that puts them up by five. We've seen real improvement from Chris Dunn at the free throw line. Used to be his Achilles heel. Second one is good. Getting both at the line, and it's a six-point ball game. Adding a little cushion to their advantage. Nice work at the line. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. They're trailing by six. 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Twenty-four seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Dort, and the three off target, and an intentional foul right there. And he misses the first one. Boy, he wanted that one to fall. Oh. 
out. He's able to hit the second one, and that makes it a seven point lead. Williams outside, and the rejection by Collins. Right there, the length of Collins proving to be the difference. Not in my house, he says. And so it's Utah with the win. Probably a little closer than they would have liked it, but a win nonetheless. Yeah, but I really got a sense that the fans gave them that emotional boost that was needed down the stretch. This crowd, man, they were electric. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, David Aldridge, Steve Smith, and the rest of our terrific 2K sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. As New Balance presents our player of the game, Lowry Markinen.